You know, I think, in, you know, if you look at the speed of the world of work and how it's transforming today, there's increased competitive pr pressure on everyone. And now combine that with increasing business complexity and talent scarcity, we've got a really interesting talent environment for all of you to be able to navigate. And I think today your CEO and your C-suite is looking for more than an advisor. They're really looking for practical advice and guidance on how your talent strategy is going to impact organizational performance. And we talk about that is really driving the workforce of the future. Candidates, employees, recruits, right, they're tech savvy and they're customers and they expect the same experience from their employers, right? So the, the expectation level of employers of employees and employees of employers is rising, right? 60, 61% of professionals say that they're they're expecting more of their employers and and the the number is even higher it's about 80 83 percent i think of employers that are expecting more of their employees so what are you doing to understand the rising needs of your talent and how are you expecting what the future talent will need as you're thinking about all of this um expectation setting and delivery yeah we do spend time trying to understand what's happening from an external trend standpoint, for sure. But I have to say the most mm -hmm. powerful thing that I think that we do around this is honestly listening to our people. And if you think about some of the big things that we've done over the last few years, they almost all come from our employees. You know, Cisco is at a bit of an inflection point where we are moving towards this concept of employee-led culture. So we have within Cisco something we call the people deal. And the people deal is essentially what we expect from our employees and what they can expect from us in return. And it's a very simplistic framework that was developed not within HR. It was kind of shepherded through the process by HR, but developed by employees in Europe. And it was very simply from a conversation that they started having around, this is what we would like to know, <laughs> and this is what we would like to tell you. So our entire, um, I, I call it talent strategy framework, was developed from our employees. Um, we also, some other interesting things we've done, uh, birthday day off, which sounds very simplistic. Uh, one of our team members was having a conversation with a leader and had a question about, motivation, you know, how, what motivates them. And they said something along the lines of, it would be really cool to have my birthday off. And if you think about, like, what a little thing that is. And so, you know, very quickly we kind of said, ah, oh, we can do that. Pretty easy. Let, let's keep our employees engaged. So work to just go. You get your birthday off now. Um, it's all on the weekend. Mm -hmm. You take them on there on Friday. Um, but time to give is the same. We give five days paid time to go and volunteer at charity. That came from employees. So when we look at how we evolve, what it is that we offer to our talent, the majority of that is coming from what our employers are telling us. And I think because we've done so many of the things that they've brought to us, they know that they're going to be listened to. So there is no shortage of feedback around some of the things that they'd like to see. And I think the future is a little bit about that and also about understanding some of the generational differences and making sure that we have a multi-generational approach um, that, that never gets um, lazy or never gets arrogant around what it is we're doing. For me, I think that's really important to avoid, avoid laziness and arrogance when it comes to what you're offering. HR goes on a tech buying spree to get better access to talent. And so all the emerging technologies, right, 92% um, of those we spoke with um, affirm that, you know, technology enhances, obviously, attraction, attraction, engagement, retention of talent. You know, that was 79% just three years ago. So that has, has risen to a pretty high number. Um, how do you determine, how does Cisco determine where you pick your spots? where you invest, how you measure, you know, the value that you're getting out of uh, that technology, and how, how do you keep pace and how do you work with adoption? So I asked you about 19 questions on that one, but talk a little bit about decisions and ad adoption. All right, I'll see, I'll see if I can unpack and get to at least the 18 of the questions in, in the question. Um, 
I think to start, the first thing that we really focus on is, is clarity around what is the problem that we're trying to solve and what is the impact that we're trying to drive. Um, there are so many shiny things out there in HR tech right now. You know, navigating, there are hundreds of vendors doing some version of AI that each kind of plug in at different places. And so for us, it's a little bit about having a firm understanding about what is the outcome that we're trying to drive and be really, really clear on what our problem statement is and not get distracted by some of the shiny things. Um, we also look at, is it a transformational technology or is it something that is enhancing a process? You know, and does it in fact hit a need for us or does it just hit a cool factor that doesn't actually solve the problem? Um, one other mm -hmm. thing that we really look at with our HR tech investment, and I don't know that it's unique. I think that others look at this as well. But we look at how, we start strongly on how does it impact the, impact the employee culture. You know, we look at how does it impact the social and emotional behavior of our employees because it's important to us. And it affects how well we're going to be able to adopt the technology. So, so we mm -hmm. tend to also look at that when we're making decisions. Um, the largest part of the decision is, is how is it going to positively affect our customers, our employees, and our potential candidates. And so we tend to, the, the big project we have going on right now is really around centralizing our data hub. And that is a bit about how do you drive predicted and predictive data? How are you able to take some of the stuff that we're pulling through the organizational health network and really impact business results to align to the people strategy? So for us, at the end of the day, it comes down to doing the most good for the most aligned to the strategy that, that we're trying to drive. And you mentioned a little bit before about um, the way that you get work done and the, the seamless vehicles that exist across Philips for the hiring manager to kind of make those choices based on analytics of how they best get that piece of work done, whether it's strategic, tactical, et cetera. Um, we constantly hear that a big part of uh, doing that well is making sure that you treat your contingent workers uh, as one of your own. Um, and we saw that come as uh, a trend in the uh, top 10 talent trends of 20, 2019, that those employers that focus on short-term relationships with talent will obviously hold them back. What's Philips doing in that space to make sure that contingent workers aren't treated like hired help effectively? Yeah. So. I'll refer back to the legislation again just for a moment. We have to be careful in different geographies and in how we we treat the contingent worker because we have to protect them them and protect ourselves. Um, and if we treat them too much like an employee, then the tax authorities will want to tax them like an employee, as an example. So we have to be conscious of the uh, the legislative environment, country by country. Absolutely. Um, but I mentioned the career site. Um, we, working with our recruitment marketing team, we did work, uh, run some fo focus groups. We did interviews with freelancers with contingent workers to find out what it is they want um, and what do they look for from an organization to, to, to try and make Philips an attractive brand to the contingent worker as well as to the employee. And we have long had an employee value proposition, an EVP. Um, and we did work to expand out from that uh, and create an assignment value proposition, so an AVP. So what does it mean to a contingent worker? What are they going to get from Philips? Why would they want to come and apply to Philips? One of the key messages we got from them was that they want to apply direct to themselves without, without going via a third-party agency. Well, you can do that today if you're an uh, looking for an, em uh, an employee role. Why should you not be able to do that if you're looking for an assignment role? Hence, putting the assignments on our career site in the Netherlands. We can't do that in every geography yet because of the legislation, um, but uh, we, we certainly can make ourselves available and get the information available to people that, that what they will get out of um, an engagement with Philips. And the reason we want to do that is that in this future of work, we see people coming and working for us as an employee, going away, doing a gig somewhere else, coming back, doing an assignment with us, going off and doing a couple of other gigs, doing a gig back with us, and maybe coming back as an employee uh, at another time in the future. So we need to make that as seamless as possible, as easy as possible. And a big change for Philip is we need to welcome people back because traditionally Philips has had long tenure, people stay for a, a long time, and it was seen as a little bit of a, a snub if you left Philips. Um, we were changing that and saying, actually, go and get the experience that you want. 
go and get the experience that you need, and, and we can benefit from that by bringing you back uh, and welcoming you back, uh, irrespective of the, the channel that we engage you through. Eighty-three percent say ta talent analytics play a critical role in sourcing, attracting, engaging, and retaining talent. Um, what investments are you making around talent a a analytics? You talked a little bit about your team construct, and what impact is this making in the business? Yeah, so a couple things. On a high level, our focus is really on digitizing the experience. And I mentioned um, previously around this concept of how do we take all of these things in the talent cloud that we have, all of these various people analytics, and have them in a centralized data hub that allows us to drive these deep insights. That is the big investment that we have going on right now that gets to predictive analytics. But I would also say that over the last year, we've made a pretty significant investment in a new ATS that has more robust capabilities than what we've seen in the past. And that investment was a direct result of some of the things we spoke of earlier around scarcity of talent, ability to manage passively our talent networks, uh, ways we can mobile and on-demand our website. So it really got mm -hmm. to a lot of um, those types of things. In the TA space specifically, in talent acquisition, we look at things that help recruiters focus on being able to talk to candidates and reducing some of the administrative pieces around it. The HR space more broadly, we really, we really look at what are the investments that are going to drive the level of insights that we need, and it's largely around our, our data hub that maybe is what going on.